let's talk about electric field lines. So let's say we have a positive charge, or more specifically, a positive point charge. The electric field lines, they will always emanate away from the positive charge. Now, if we have a negative charge, the electric field lines will point toward a negative charge. So that's the first thing you want to know when studying electric field lines. The direction of the electric field tells you what kind of charge you're dealing with. If they're emanating away from a certain point, you're dealing with a positive charge. If they're pointing towards a certain point, you're dealing with a negative charge. Now, the equation that will help you to calculate the electric field is this equation. It's kq over r squared. This will help you calculate the magnitude of the electric field that comes from a point charge. Now, Q represents the magnitude of that charge with the unit's column. R is the distance between the point charge and the point of interest where you want to measure the electric field. So the electric field at point P is given by this equation. Now, K is a constant, which approximately equals 9 times 10 to the 9 and it has the units newtons per square column per square meter. So we talked about the direction of the electric field that emanates from a certain kind of charge. The next thing we need to talk about is the density of the electric field lines and what that tells you. So consider these two situations. On the left, we have two electric field lines, and on the right, I'm going to draw six electric field lines in the same region of space. Which electric field is stronger? The electric field at region A or region B? The answer is going to be region B. Notice that the density of the electric field lines is twice as great because we have six lines in the same region of space versus three lines. So the more lines that you have in a given region of space, the greater the density and the stronger the electric field. So on the left, if the electric field is equal to, let's say it has a value of 1e, on the right, it's going to be twice as strong. Because the lines are closer, you have twice the number of lines in the same region of space. So the density is twice as much. So the closer the lines are together tells you that you're dealing with a stronger electric field. Now, when dealing with electric field lines, it's important to understand that these lines, they don't cross each other. So that's not acceptable. The lines never intersect with each other. Now, I'm going to give you a question. So let's say we have charge A and charge A has these electric field lines. And let's compare that to charge B. Which looks like this. we're going to compare that to charge C, it might take me a minute to draw this. So if you want to fast forward the video a little, I understand. And I'm also going to uh, put in charge D as well. So while I draw this, let's say that charge B has a magnitude of positive 4 coulombs. We'll call this QB. 
With this information, calculate the charges of the other charges, charge A, C, and D. Calculate the magnitude and the sign of those charges. And let's introduce charge E as well. Let's see if I can fit it here. So feel free to pause the video if you want to work on those problems. So charge B has a magnitude of four coulombs. And notice that we have a total of eight electric field lines. Now, charge A only has four electric field lines. So what does that tell you about the charge? What is the value of QA? Now, notice that the electric field lines, they're directed away from charge A. So that tells us that we're dealing with a positive charge. And we have four lines, which is half of eight lines. So QA is going to be half the value of QB. It's going to be two coulombs. Now looking at charge C, we can count that it has a total of 16 lines, twice as many as charge B. So the charge is going to have twice the value. Now the electric field lines, they're directed away from charge C. So we know we're dealing with a positive charge. So it's going to be positive eight coulombs. Now what about charge D? Notice that the electric lines are directed towards charge D, so it's going to have a negative charge as opposed to a positive charge. And it only has four lines, the same number of lines as charge A, so the magnitude is going to be the same as charge A. The only difference is it's going to be negative two coulombs instead of positive two coulombs. Now for charge E, the electric field lines are directed inward, so we're dealing with a negative charge but it has eight lines, very similar to charge B, so the magnitude is gonna be four coulombs. It's just negative four coulombs. So you could use the number of lines that come away from a point charge to get an idea of what the magnitude of that point charge is gonna be, as long as you have something to reference it with. The direction of the electric field will tell you if you're dealing with a positive charge or a negative charge. By the way, for those of you who want some practice problems on calculating electric fields, feel free to check out the links in the description section below. I'm going to be posting more related topics to this one that you might be studying uh, for. Now, let's draw the electric field lines if we have two positive point charges that are relatively close to each other. Now, we know that the electric field vectors, they're gonna point away from a positive charge. So to the right, because they're both pointing away from each other, the electric field is going to cancel in the middle. It's gonna be zero. And it turns out that the electric field vectors, they're gonna bend away from two positive charges, like this. At this point, the electric field is basically vertical. And if you wanna understand why, at this point, the electric field from, let's say, charge A, let's call this charge B, I'm gonna redraw it here. So at that point, from charge A, the electric field is going in this direction. Let's call that EA. And from B, if we draw a line from the charge to that point, it's going like this. So EB is going this way. Now, these are two separate electric vectors. What we want to get is the resultant vector. Now, EA has an X component. Let's call it EAX, and it has a Y component, EAY. EB also has an X component. Let's call it EBX, and it has a Y component, EBY. 
Notice that when you add these two vectors, the x components, they cancel. One is directed to the right, the other is directed to the left. So these two will cross out. When you add the y components, they're in the same direction, so they're additive. That's why the electric field vector in this point is up. And here it's the same thing, it's going to be down. If you were to draw the two vectors E A, E B at this point, the X components will cancel, but the Y components, they're going to be directed down. They're going to add together. So that's why we see the electric field lines, they bend in that direction. It's because if you find the electric field vector at that point, add the two vectors up from A and B, you'll get the direction of the electric field line. Now let's draw the rest of it. So this is going to bend away towards, away from the other positive charge. And over here it's going to be directed to the left, over here to the right. And it's going to be symmetrical relative to the center. So that's how you can draw the electric field lines if you have two positive charges of equal magnitude. So let's call this QA and QB, and let's say that they're the same. That's how it's going to look like. Now, what happens if we have a positive charge and if we have a negative charge? Feel free to pause the video and draw the electric field lines for these two charges. We know the electric field emanates away from the positive charge and towards the negative charge. So in the middle, it's going to look like that. Above it, it's going to point towards the negative charge. And it's just going to flow in that direction. Now, this line is going to do the same thing, but we're going to run out of space. So I'm just going to draw a portion of it on the left side and a portion of it on the right side. Now in the middle, it's going to go away from the positive charge, but toward the negative charge. And then once you have that, you can see what the rest is going to be like. I have a question for you. This line here, should I draw it like this or like this? In which way should it curve at this point here? Should it be like line C or line D? At this point, it should be like line C because remember, it needs to, the electric field line needs to flow from the positive charge to the negative charge. So if these are the only two charges, it wouldn't be correct to draw this way. We would only draw this way if there was a positive charge on the right side, because the line has to flow from the positive charge to the negative charge. So the right way to draw it would be like this way at this point. And over here, it's going to look like that. I'm right out of space, but You can see where it's going. So that's how you could draw the electric field lines if you have a positive and a negative point charge. Now let's say if you're given this problem. Let's say you have two point charges, but with unequal magnitudes. So let's say this one is positive two coulombs, and this one is, let's say, negative four coulombs. How would you draw the electric field lines for this problem? Number one, you need to make sure that the electric field lines, they point away from the positive charge and they point towards the negative charge. Number two, 
because this line, I mean this charge, has twice the magnitude, it's going to have twice the number of lines. So let's say we decide to draw six lines for the positive two Coulomb charge. That means we need to draw 12 lines from the negative four Coulomb charge. The first line is going to be easy to draw, just a straight line from the positive charge to the negative charge. The second line is going to be similar to, it's going to be away from the positive charge, but in the other direction. For the negative charge, we can do it like this. It has to point towards the negative charge. Now we could draw another line, kind of like we did in the last problem, where it goes, it bends away from the positive charge and goes towards the negative charge. So we have four lines coming away from the positive charge. Let's draw two more. We can draw a line that looks like this and another one that looks like this. If we were to continue this line, it would go here. And if we were to continue this line, it would look like that. So far, we have six lines going into the negative charge, but we need 12. So this would be seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. So this would be a relatively accurate description of the electric field lines for this situation. The lines are going away from the positive charge but going towards the negative charge and we have twice the number of lines for a negative 4 Coulomb charge compared to a positive 2 Coulomb charge. Now let's talk about parallel plates. So let's say we have a positively charged plate and a negatively charged plate. My drawing is not perfect, but we'll go ahead and make this work. We know the electric field lines, they're gonna go away from the positive charge towards the negative charge. So in the interior of these two plates, the electric field lines will be relatively constant. At the edge, they're going to bulge a bit, like this. But in the middle, in the interior, it's relatively straight. So that's all you need to do to draw the electric field lines between two charged parallel plates. Now what about this situation? What if you have a positive charge next to a negatively charged plate. How would you draw the electric field lines in this case? Feel free to pause the video if you want to try that. Well, the first line we can draw is a direct line from the positive charge to the negatively charged plate. Now for the negatively charged plate, the arrow is going to be relatively straight as you get closer to it. From the positive charge, they can bend. So here, it's going to bend away from the positive charge, but become relatively horizontal as you get closer to the negatively charged plate. So it's going to look like that. To the left, we're going to have a straight line directed here. And then over here, it's just going to bend as well towards the negatively charged plate. So that's how we can draw the electric field lines between a point charge and a charge plate. So that's basically it for this video. I'm going to stop it here. Hopefully it gave you a good introduction into electric field lines. Now for those of you who want more practice problems on electric fields, don't forget to check out the stuff in the description section of this video. Thanks for watching.